you've been waiting for a long time for a lot of things, I got news for you this morning. Your wait is over. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? You've been waiting for a job. Your wait is over. But there's something that we should do. Based on what we do is what God will do. So both of us have a role to play. God and we. Based on what we do, he would do. Go to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God, everyone say my God. My God. Not anyone else's God. My God. my God. Say it again. My God. Make him personal. My God. My God. Who's your God? My God. Up there he's, he's in heaven. But my God shall supply some of your needs. You sure? In my Bible it says few needs. Oh, I think I got the wrong version. Okay. We'll meet all your needs. All means all. Chuma all. We'll meet all your needs. Everyone say all my needs. According to his riches. Amen. How many of you believe that he is richer than the richest? Amen. Amen. You can't compare his riches according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So when I read that verse of scripture, I discovered that God has a warehouse. In his warehouse, my brother, my sister, he has a lot of riches. And those riches are some of the needs that you're in need of. Amen? Maybe we need healing. Or maybe we need some finance. Or maybe we need a breakthrough. You can name your need. It's stored up over there. Where in glory? I mean, I'm reading the scripture in glory. Glory is not here. Glory is up there. So, it's all stored up over there. Now, if there's anything that you want, you want a miracle? I had so many hands go up. You want healing? You want a breakthrough? Whatever you want. My brother, my sister, you got to go yonder and get it from there. And whatever you need, we're going to bring it down. I tell you, God is a good God. He's about to do great things this morning. So, we got to go there and get what we need. It is in his storehouse in glory. If you would study in the Old Testament, we go to Exodus chapter 17. We'll read from verse 8 all the way down to verse 11. Then came the Amalekites and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and you fight with the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and they fought with the Amalekites. And Moses and Aaron and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, the Amalekites prevailed. Our question is, why did Moses have to go up? This old man climbed up on top of the hill. What was the purpose in that? I want you to know that Moses did something in the physical with a spiritual mindset. He was doing something in, this, in, in the physical to give us a spiritual picture. What Moses was actually doing in a way, he said, if we need to see victory down in the valley, I got to go up. Are you with me? I got to go up into glory. And Moses with Aaron and Ur climbed up the top of the hill. I don't know how high that hill was, but it was a hill that they climbed up. And this old man climbed up on top. And my brother, my sister, when he went on top, it was actually going into glory, so to say, and getting the needs met. What was the need? 
The need was victory in a battle. Some of us are in a battle this morning. Don't fight the battle down here. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen? You got to go up over there. And I'm going to show you how are you going to go up over there. You're not going to take a jet to go there. But I'm going to show you another way in which we can go. How many of you are ready? Amen? Keep your seat belts on. We are going there. So the scripture says, Moses went up. And as Moses went up and stood on top and lifted up his hand, Joshua from the valley yelled out, Moses, we are having the victory. Amen. Elijah and Elisha had to walk and cross the Jordan. And only when they crossed the Jordan that Elisha got a double portion of Elijah. You got to cross over. You cannot sit put on these chairs and expect miracles to drop on your lap. They don't work that way. Are you with me, church? There's something that we have to do. And when we do what we have to do, he does what he can do. We must move from the natural into the supernatural to see the supernatural manifest itself in the natural. Now, in the Old Testament, Moses had to climb up. Elijah and Elijah had to cross over. How about in the New Testament? We don't do things in the physical. Or in other words, I don't have to climb up the mountain. The reason why we don't have to move because Jesus Christ brought about the changes. And I want to show you how he brought the changes. Go to chapter 5 of the book of John, verse 2. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the, into the pool and troubled the water, and whosoever then first went in after the water was troubled, stepped in, he was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. But there was a certain man that was there with an infirmity for 38 years. Now, I have a question, you know, when, you know, sometimes when I read, I don't know how you do it, but this is how I do it. When I read, I have lots of questions. And so I was having a question, why all this? You know, imagine a pool there. And the pool was surrounded with a lot of sick people, withered people, you know, people that were blind, people that were paralyzed, and all kind of conditions, you know, people all around that pool. And can you imagine everyone's eye, you know, just looking at the water, and at a certain season, not, not 24-7, at a certain season, the angel will come down and trouble the water, and when the water is moving, somebody will jump in. And, and the first person who jumped in got healed, not the second person. The first person got healed. So this poor man waited for 38 years. And now Jesus Christ comes along and spoke to this man. So the question is, why all this? When I read that, this is what I came to understand, that in the old covenant, God made a covenant with his people. And the covenant, one of the covenant that God made with the people I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. But down the line, people had forgotten that God was a covenant-keeping God. They forgot that he was a healing God. And that's one of the reasons why one day Jesus Christ looked at that woman and said, Isn't this not the daughter of Abraham? Meaning, isn't this not the daughter of covenant? And why has Satan kept the bound these many years? Be loose from your infirmity and just instantly healed. So the Lord provided the spoon over there and had this angel that came and moved the water 
you know, to remind the people that no matter what, the Old Testament God is a God that still heals. And then finally Jesus Christ comes to him. Now, when you read that account over there, you would discover this man never even had an iota of faith. Absolutely no faith. Jesus Christ comes to him and talks to him and said, why have you been like this? He said, sir. He called Jesus Christ, sir. He said, sir, 38 years I've been like this. Because when the water was moving, I had no one to put me in. So Jesus Christ told this man, take up your bed, rise, and walk. And it was a Sabbath day. Amen. And the man took up his bed, he got healed, and he was walking. I'll come back to this in a moment. Let's skip over. So this man was healed because our God is a covenant-keeping God, even of the Old Testament. Now, <clears throat> a lot of Old Testament things had to be done physically. But my brother, my sister, today we don't do things physically. We do things spiritually. But what is that connector? And I'm asking you a question. I want to see who will answer me. What is that connector that connects God and me in order for me to receive whatever I've been waiting, it could be a breakthrough, it could be finance, it could be healing, it could be a miracle, it could be just about anything. There's something that connects God with me. What is it that connects? Sorry? Prayer, okay. Anyone else? That's right. Faith and belief. Amen? Prayer is good. But more than anything else, we need faith. Everyone say faith. faith. You know, let me put it like this. Faith sometimes is like a link missing in the chain. Now, if a link is missing in the chain, can you tell me what happens to the chain? It's broken into two. You got to find that missing link, okay? You got to clamp one end of the missing link to the other end of the chain and clamp off the chain that has a missing link. And when you clamp it, the chain is complete. My brother, my sister, why we are not receiving? Why our bulbs are not burning? It's because we have disconnected. We are not connecting. And I want you this morning to hold the plug and shove it into the socket. Amen. And when you do it, you are connected to the power source and you'll begin to receive whatever you've been waiting for. Now, go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Get ready for your miracle. Read verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Everyone say, we're healed. It doesn't say that we can be healed, we shall be healed, I think I'll be healed, maybe I'm healed. No, it's a settled matter by whose stripes we were healed. In fact, Peter is borrowing this verse of scripture from Isaiah chapter 53. Amen? And Peter puts it, you know, in bold letters over here, and he says, by whose stripes we were healed. How many of you believe that this is the word of God? All of us do. Put your hands up. How many of you believe that this is the word of God, but yet you have not been healed? What's the problem? The problem is this. I'm not believing on what I believe. Amen? Now stick with me. Read that verse again. But read it the way I'm reading it. Okay? I want you to read it the way I'm reading. You're looking at that verse? Now read it the way I'm reading. Hello? What happened?
Come on, you're getting the message. Okay, I told you to read it the way I'm reading. Kuch nahi hoya. Okay. Why it's not happening? For by whose stripes we, are, we were healed? Nothing has happened. We are the same way. In fact, we run to the doctor. Amen? I'm not saying this against Arun. But we run to the doctor. See, what we do is we run to the doctor. Now listen, my brother, my sister, and let me stress on this. If anyone falls sick, if the first thought that comes to your mind let me go to the doctor. You're a faithless person. Amen? But if somebody falls sick, your first thought, let me go to the Lord. You're a person of faith. Now I'm not saying don't go to doctors, but like Arun just said, it's not the doctors that heal us. Amen? Thank God for the doctors. Thank God for the wisdom that the doctors have. And that wisdom did not come from them. That wisdom came from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the doctor uses the wisdom of the Lord to administer healing. And when the person is healed, if, if you're a Christian, if you're healed, you don't give the glory to the doctor. You say, Lord, I thank you that you healed me using the doctor. So now I read that verse of scripture that nothing has happened because I read it in a way that I just showed you. But now I want to show you how do you receive. Let's go to Romans chapter 10 and read verse 17. So then faith cometh. Everyone say faith comes. Faith say it again. Faith how does faith come? Faith comes, I'm looking at something repeated over here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm looking at the word hearing twice. Amen? Now we're doing a Bible study this morning. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. We'll come back to Romans chapter 11 of the book of Mark. Now this is the story of the fig tree that Jesus Christ cursed you remember, he was going to the fig tree expecting to see figs on the tree, but never found figs. He seen more leaves than figs. And what did Jesus Christ do? He cursed the tree. Now, he did not tell Peter the next day, Peter, can you go and check and see the tree that I cursed? Go and check and see if anything has happened. No, he never said it. But on the other hand, Peter, when he was walking by, I don't know what Peter was doing in the early part of the morning, you know, because he was staying with the Lord that night. And so, while returning, the tree caught his attention. And he was so shocked and surprised. He goes to the Lord, he says, Lord, Lord, Lord. He says, you know what happened? You know the tree you cursed yesterday? And Jesus Christ maybe would have said, before you tell me what happened, I know what happened. It withered from root upward. Now when Peter said, it withered, Immediately Jesus Christ looked at him and so casually, he says in verse 22, Jesus answering and said, have faith in God. What was an answer? I mean, that was not a relevant answer to what Peter was just now saying. Peter was just saying, the tree withered what you cursed yesterday, have faith in God. Now actually in the original or in the Hebrew text, it does not say have faith in God. It says, have the same faith in you which is in God. You must have the same faith in you which was already in God. Or have the God kind of a faith in you. Not faith in God. Many have faith in God, but not many have the faith of God. You must have the faith of God. And when you have the faith of God, whatever you say, it will happen the way you said it. Amen? Now this is a continuation from verse 22, verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever means whosoever, whosoever is you and me also, that whosoever shall say 
unto this mountain, a very specific mountain. He did not say, whosoever shall say unto the mountain. Amen? He is not talking about Mount Sinai or Mount Ebron or, or Mount uh, Scopus or whatever. But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, a specific mountain he's talking about. What mountain is he talking about? Shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall, but shall believe that whatso things ever he said, it shall come to pass, and you shall have whatsoever you say. So if Jesus Christ said, say to this mountain, what he was actually trying to communicate to Peter, which is communicating to you and to me this morning, that mountain that he was talking to us about, a specific mountain, is a mountain of unbelief and doubt. Amen. I don't know if I'm speaking to an audience this morning who have this unbelief and doubt as a mountain in our life. You have to say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea. And when you say it, whatever you say with your mouth, don't doubt with your heart. Because when you say something, you will get what you said. My brother, my sister, don't speak negative things. Your words have become a snare to you. You're trapped by your words. Amen? Can you say amen? amen? Even if you're not well, if you're sick, don't say you're sick. If you say you're sick, what you're actually doing, you're reinforcing the sickness in you. Amen? If you're not well, this is what you need to say. I know I'm not well. I know I have this and that problem. But I believe the word of God. For the word of God says, by your stripes, I am healed. Amen? We go on. Oh, I tell you, I've got a big back pain. Oh, i got shoulder pain. i got neck pain. i got head pain. And all the pains we're talking about. We are confessing and we are confessing. What's happening? We are getting what we are confessing. We don't confess that. Yes, I know I'm sick. You can't deny it. I know I have this problem. You can't deny it. But by his stripes, I am healed. And what do you think I say after that? I am healed. I still have the sickness, but I am healed. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something? Look at the next verse. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Come on, all of us have a desire for something or another. Amen? You have a desire? I have some desires. And I don't have to tell you what desires I have. You don't have to tell me what desires you have. But we all have desires. Can we say amen to that? Yes. Amen? So the, the verse says, In whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, you bring your desires in prayer. And when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Now listen, my brother, my sister, this verse you know, contradicts what we believe. This verse says, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Some of, some of us may say, let me see before I believe. But this verse says, believe before you see. Amen? Is that clear? You got to believe before you see. Don't see to believe. Coming back to Second Peter. Let's go to Second Peter. Read it the way I'm reading. Everyone looking at that verse. Who by his own self bear our sins. Come on, read it with me. And his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Okay, you're reading it over there. But I want you to read this verse with the same tone of how I'm reading it. Read it along with me. For by whose stripes, come on church, for by whose stripes, say it again, for by whose stripes we were healed. Read it again. For by whose stripes we were healed. Read it once again. For by whose stripes we were healed. Read it once more. Don't stop. For by whose stripes we were healed. 
once again for by whose stripes we were healed how many of you have received faith this morning faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god my brother my sister i just don't read the bible i got to hear myself reading the word and when i hear it faith comes and when i read it a number of times for by whose stripes we were healed and immediately at that instant moment i begin to believe the stripes of jesus christ has healed me Amen. what do you think i do after that revelation chapter 12 verse 11 is a beautiful verse of scripture and we should know that at the tip of our finger for we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so what happens i go to brother ambi brother ambi i had a chronic disease but 1 peter 2:24 says by his stripes i'm healed brother i'm i'm healed i'm testifying what is happening when i testify to brother ambi when i testify to brother victor and pastor manu and i'm testing to ev- testifying to everyone i'm giving activation to my faith i'm activating my faith my faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger until the point comes even though i may see symptoms i don't look at the symptoms i look at the word i believe the word said it and that settles it please ask just before you leave please ask god is here to heal you as we went on saying that word uh, 1 peter 224 and i was just keep saying it louder and louder i felt a tingling effect something just fell on my shoulders Amen. i was unable to lift my shoulder past one month i couldn't sleep towards my um, left side i couldn't do workout in my gym i was having real tough time even yesterday when i was working out i said lord how long i'm holding this pain i want to get rid out of it suddenly when we kept saying and speaking it louder and louder i felt a fire were running through i could still sense the fire of god flowing through my body right now and i suddenly lifted my hand you know the pastor was telling lift your hands i was not even able to lift my arm because it was so much pain i had suddenly the lord touched me Amen. i went kept saying even before we finished it i suddenly felt that the pain was being lifted up and i can really lift my arm without any pain thank you so much well our testimony is like this Amen. Praise God.